Welcome back. This is still why in the morning and on our first segment of the day on Sport and Tech, we want to talk about the software development life cycle. It might sound a bit technical, but don't worry to not come at the back and what it actually means in the simplest way possible because, because we have an expert with us here. He's the CEO of Yada School of uh, Tech Technology. Uh, he goes by the name Talmon Mwakesi. Most welcome, Talmon. Thank you, Stephanie. You've been here before? Yes. All right, Karim Mutena. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we want to talk about um, software, the software development life cycle. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit about your background, and then now let we get into the question. All right. Um, I, I've done computer science, mm -hmm. studied computer science, then now moved into the career field okay. for over six years mm -hmm. in software engineering. Yes, so I'm a senior software engineer in doing many things right now. Mm -hmm. We have the Yada School of Tech, mm -hmm. where it's a coding school that we get people who don't exactly know about coding or even know about coding, and we give them the knowledge of software engineering at various levels. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we'll get to that later on. Mm -hmm. First, let's tackle software, the software development life cycle. So tell us first, um, what is software development when you speak about software development before when you get to the life cycle? Mm. Software development is actually bringing something from an idea to an application that you can use, whether it be a mobile application, a web application, mm -hmm. or any other system. That's what we call software development. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, you know, when we speak about um, technology, there's a lot of, you know, people have developed software. And there's, there's usually something. There's another techie who came here mm -hmm. and said that sometimes we confuse IT and tech. When you talk about I tech, people think of IT. So what's your view on that? Yes, information technology is more general. It's mm. like for everything about technology. Mm. Yes. Now, when we talk tech, and uh, more specifically coding or software engineering, mm -hmm. we are getting now down to the software because there's hardware, there's mm. software, there's information security, there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Just like the techie said, like it's not one umbrella because many times I've also seen that where some mm -hmm. someone thinks, oh, you, you are... A software developer, I have a machine that has a problem. Could <laughs> you come in, fix it for me? Fix it. Yes, uh -huh. it doesn't work like that. It's okay. just like any other field where mm -hmm. you have a major thing, but people go on specializing. Different, uh, different things now. Yes. Different specialization. Yes. All right. So now, um, what are the different cycles that uh, that are there in the software development? Okay. So the software development life cycle is basically the process of now delivering the software. Mm -hmm. You have someone who needs a particular software, a client, or maybe it's yourself. You right. want to start from somewhere. You have only requirements. You only know, I want to make an application that does ABCD. Let's say, for example, I want mm -hmm. to make an application that allows you to order taxis and do everything. Maybe that's how they are thinking with Uber as they began. All right. So how do they get from there to the final product? Mm -hmm. So the life cycle enables us to be to be open and transparent in the process. Mm -hmm. Whereby, you as a person who's not technical, you know exactly what's going on at every phase of the development. Okay, so as a person, I'm supposed to know if someone is developing yes. an app for me, I'm supposed to know all that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right. Yes, you're supposed to be in the know the whole time. It, it creates that transparency. Because mm -hmm. many times out there, I've had uh, software developers get a bad rapport. Okay. Yes, because of not completing software. So someone comes, they say, this software has been made by three people. It has never been completed. Mm -hmm. The software development life cycle enables us to mitigate those risks. Okay. Yes. So for someone who, you know, someone who wants to have, the, have a software be, uh, developed by someone, mm -hmm. what are, b are they supposed to know about the different phases? What's the phase one? What is the stage two, three to the last one? Okay. So the life cycle is divided into two, you can say. It, it comprises of phases mm -hmm. and models. Mm -hmm. The phases are common in all the models. It's like the phase is like a manual. Okay. So the models define how you choose to implement them. 
Mm. So the phases are uh, six. The first one is planning. Mm -hmm. So we sit down with all the stakeholders and we, you give me the requirements. We understand what it will take to actually build this software. So that's why the cycle becomes of help because we're able to identify things early mm -hmm. and know we're going to need this much of a workforce yeah. and we can work with this much budget to deliver this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So after you plan, then you go to designing. So des the design part you leave to the technical people because that's where they make the choices of technology. Like there are many programming languages. Mm -hmm. Why do I choose programming language A and not B? B. That is now in the design phase of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then now you go to implementing. That's actually coding out the solution. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we plan. We have planned, we've designed. Now we are with the team. We are now coding out the solution. Mm -hmm. So after implementation, that's where you get to testing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now we're just testing to know, you gave me these requirements. I want to see if these requirements are translating to this particular software that I wanted, even as we go on. Uh, all right. So that's, that's where the transparency comes in. Mm -hmm. I can make one requirement, then come back to you. Okay. So mm -hmm. the testing part, is it what we can compare to, um, wh what do we usually call it? A prototype? Yes. Uh -huh. So you, a prototype and then you test it, see how it's working. Yes. And then see if you need to do uh, corrections to it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right. Yes. And depending on the model. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll mention the model so that you see how they Okay. kind of play out together. All right. So we've tested it. You've assured, uh, you assured you as a client that this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Now we get to deploying it. The final stage. Yes. Now we are deploying it to uh, a, a current version that you can access. Mm -hmm. You as a user. Now I'm not just showing you from somewhere. Okay. Now you as a user, if it's an app, I've given you a test, lab, uh, a test app. Mm -hmm. For example, you find people will tell you this is the beta version because this is the one that we have given you to test mm. so that we find out all the errors and we finish and we understand what is there. Okay. So normally even when you're deploying, you have like two versions. You have the one that I use uh, as a developer, the one that I'll use for testing mm -hmm. and the one that is in live. So that when I make corrections, I don't just put them on live because oh. that can affect, can crash everything. Okay. Yes, because so when yeah. I put them, when I put it on test, I'm able to see how it will react. I'm mm -hmm. able to test it. So by the time I deploy the solution, and depending on the application, the repercussions are different. Imagine people like m if they just rolled out every new change and mm. kept disrupting people. That would be terrible. Yes. So <laughs> that's why they test out something before they ever come to give you. Okay. Before yes. Right. Then finally, it's just maintenance now. Mm -hmm. Now we are sure this is what you want. Now it's maintenance. I, I want uh, an upgrade on a certain feature. Mm -hmm. something does not work quite like what I wanted it to. Because yeah. many times, even clients don't know what they want until they see it. <laughs> but when they see it is when they're like, okay, this is not exactly what I had in mind. So which brings us back to ensuring the planning phase was good. So this life cycle enables you, because you'll have a document at the end of it that all of you are referring to. Mm -hmm. And say, this is our document. This is how we are going to be building the application. Okay, yes. so you'd say that the importance of going through the life cycle is to ensure, uh, you know, the product is of good quality, that yes. the delivery is good, right? Yes. Okay. That's how you end up building high quality software. Mm -hmm. If you go through without shortchanging the process. Yeah. Yes, because developers can build it either way. But with this one, even the customer satisfaction is increased because ah. they can see what's happening. They can see where their money is going, mm. where the resources are going. They've been through that process yes. together with you, one way or the other. Yes. What about the models that you're mentioning? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the models are four. Okay. Yes. Just to breeze through them, there is uh, one called waterfall. Mm -hmm. Now the waterfall model, just as it implies, makes sure that every step depends on the other. We cannot design before we plan. We cannot implement before we design, and so on and so forth. Ah, uh, all right. Yes, so everything depends on the other. The thing. other. Yes. That's the waterfall model, and mm. then we have... Now we have the another one called iterative. Mm -hmm. This one, we can take a small set of requirements and start building. Mm -hmm. It's when we require speed. Okay. More than everything. Because you can take, you can find that you can take even a month to just gather requirements, and you don't have a month. Okay, yes. so it takes speed. Yes, right now we are in an era where speed is very important. 
Mm -hmm. Bef because if you blink, someone else has made that software. So you need to make your version, mm -hmm. put it out there. Okay. Yeah. And what um, what sort of um, makes one decide what model that they they want to go with? Depending on the mm -hmm. the kind of application you're building. If you know all the requirements up front, then the waterfall model becomes easy. Okay. Because uh, up front, I can just go from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I, I'll not find any surprises. But maybe you're dealing with something that's a bit more dynamic. Yes, you know the requirements, but it's a bit more dynamic. Mm -hmm. So you'll want it to be iterative so that I can always refer to the process, mm -hmm. redo it again mm -hmm. until I finish. Okay. Mm. Um, how, how can you ensure... Um, effective communication and collaboration throughout the software development life cycle? Yes. Now, what happens is, normally when you're doing this, you have someone like a product manager or a project manager. Mm -hmm. So their work is to... Th this is the liaison between the developers and the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So he's able to interpret the business needs and able to tell the stakeholders this is what is going on. Mm -hmm. So normally you have like one software that can help you mm -hmm. to align all of you in the same place. Okay. Uh, so you have uh, softwares like maybe you've heard of ClickUp and things like that just to help you align your tasks. All right. So anyone can come in at any time, any, any stakeholder that is at the top there and see today they are building the login page. Mm. So at the end of the week, authentication or logging into the system will be possible and they can test that. Mm -hmm. So they're able to be at par because everyone is at par. And when something delays, mm -hmm. you can see why it has delayed. Maybe we needed a certain license from the government to execute. Maybe it's a financial application. There are licenses involved. You can't just build your application there you want and do what you want. Mm -hmm. So as you wait, you can indicate there we are waiting for a certifi certain certification from the government to do ABCD. We have been told it will take three working days. Everyone is on the same page. All right. So yeah. that's, the, you know, the, there's effective communication throughout yes. the whole process. Yes. And I believe that also promotes, um, um, what do I call it, um, reliability mm. um, of the software throughout the, the process again. Yes. All right. Now, um, what are some of the common challenges that are faced during the life cycle, the development life cycle? One of the biggest challenges is something that we call scope creep. This is when the scope keeps widening and widening and widening. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you are a client, you've sat down and you've decided no. Mm -hmm. The way I envisioned this working is not what I said. So I come back and tell you now, let's not do it like this. Let's implement it like this. I say, okay. Then we start implementing it. Then you tell me, actually, <laughs> this is not what <laughs> I, I had in to. mind. So it becomes a never-ending process, just iterating, iterating. Uh -huh. So this enables us to stick to the plan to start with, whereby you can tell them now, remember the requirements you gave us? We are going to build those ones first. Mm -hmm. Then after we finish those ones, now we are going to add any additional changes, and this is what it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. That's why you take some time to yeah. do the actual planning. Mm -hmm. So the biggest challenge you'll find is that scope creep, where, and you'll find that a client or the stakeholder is like the developer is not doing what I want and the developer is like you, you're adding on additional requirements that we had not talked about. So it becomes a never-ending blame game Back if this forth. process is not handled properly. All that right. is the biggest challenge you'll ever find. I can only imagine being a customer yes. and you don't know, understand, you mm. know, what is happening and the work that goes into it. Yes. You just wake up, you have a new idea and then you want it to be implemented. Yes. You've seen something. Mm. So I, I understand that that can be a challenge. So the pr solution to that is you first stick to the requirements and then the additions come later on yes. in the process. What about the um, maintenance? Um, how do you ensure successful maintenance of the software even after the development? Now, that's why when you're planning, there's a place for maintenance. So mm. there's a contract or maybe an agreement where we've said, mm. I'll give you maintenance at such a fee for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. And as I'm doing this, these are the tasks um, that are under maintenance. Like, it just takes a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. We say maintenance means, does not mean new requirements. It means making sure you have like 99% uptime. There's no time mm -hmm. your system will go down. Because I am here. Okay. So you can call me anytime and I can make sure your system is up. That's mm -hmm. maintenance. Making sure there is enough space to handle your things. Maybe we started off and now the business has grown. Okay. 
Okay. Now we have more users. I'm there to help you scale. That mm -hmm. is maintenance, as mm -hmm. opposed to you've thought of a different direction. When you do that, we come and we make like an amendment on the whole process. Okay. From and we <laughs> and we take it through the life cycle again. Mm -hmm because we treat it as a new thing, depending oh. on what you want. Uh -huh. But it's very adjustable and it takes two parties who are reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yes, to make it work. Uh, you've spoken on maintenance, you've spoken about you know, system downtime. What usually causes the system downtime? The key cause is lack of proper planning. See, when we sit and we plan and we say we are going to launch, by the time we've gotten to the design phase, remember the design phase, mm -hmm. where now we are choosing the technologies and we're saying, because it's Uber, we're going to use such and such a, te a technology. If you didn't plan well, you'll use the wrong technology. Mm -hmm. Then you'll, you'll, you'll realize what I have here cannot sustain the traffic that is incoming. Proper planning means I have foreseen that even you're going to have 8 million users or okay. whatever, mm -hmm. and still it's going to it's not going to have downtime. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say we are, you, are, you are dealing with something to do with elections mm. and you're creating a portal for everyone to see. And maybe you envision only one million Kenyans can mm -hmm. have access. Then shock on you, more Kenyans Interesting. come on board. Yeah. And you see like a system like that is very time, it's very time sensitive. Mm -hmm. If it goes down, you start asking why, why are we having system downtime? What is happening? Yeah. So if we didn't plan well, we needed to have accounted for the fact that this could scale. Mm -hmm. So we put in the proper architecture to ensure that if it skills, it's just a very minor adjustment and I can accommodate more traffic. All right. Yes. Um, again, you've mentioned when you're speaking about technology in the de design phase, mm -hmm. for you to know, it's important for you to know the kind of technology you're using based on the kind of software you want to have. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about technology, are we speaking of the language? Are we speaking of the model? What are, are we speaking about exactly? Now that's where software engineering comes into play. Mm -hmm. At the heart of it, many times, the language you're using does not matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is the person behind it and seeing how everything is connected to each other. Then now you, it's about choosing the right tool for the right job. Because mm -hmm. there are tools made specifically to help some kind of systems and not some other kind of systems. For example, my approach in creating a chart system will be different in creating a system that is an e-commerce system. Mm. So I have to factor that in as I'm doing that. Yes. Okay. So what kind of, I, I want to get the, some sort of example. Mm -hmm. What kind of technology goes into creating a chat system and what goes into creating an e-commerce system? Mm, okay. So when you are thinking a chat system, mm -hmm. you are thinking real-time exchange of information and data because I want to chat, you want to. So mostly you'll use uh, some kind of architecture that allows for something we call events, meaning I'm responding to what is happening. Mm -hmm. And this responding mm, uses a technology called web sockets. So it's like they're they are just listening and waiting. That's, it's a, like an open channel. Mm. When you drop a chat, it appears. That's why you find chatting to be interesting. You are there, okay. you are like on Facebook, Mm -hmm. you, you see someone is online. Why? Because there is like a t an open channel listening. The moment they get online, they tell you this person is online. Mm -hmm. Then you can chat them. The moment you chat them, the, the channel is open, just waiting and listening. Your channel is open on your side, their channel is open. On their side. Yes, so I have to factor that in as I'm thinking because if I am building an e-commerce system, I don't need to use that technology. Because someone will get in when they get in, they'll make a purchase when they make a purchase, they'll make an order. And yes, for example, when you are using Amazon, you're not exactly chatting with anyone. Mm -hmm. You are going, doing your research, maybe even today you look at something, like I don't want this, tomorrow I look at it again. So my, when I'm doing e-commerce, I need to mostly support things like payments and security. I need to think that way mm -hmm. more than chat. Oh, so okay. even in my choice of database systems, I need, let's say, more integrity when I'm using an e-commerce system, meaning I need to account for every transaction. That's how you're able to get a refund. That's why right now if you send money, you'll just be told send the transaction code. Because mm -hmm. someone sat and thought, okay, we need to be very careful with handling finances. Even if you send money to someone mm -hmm. and it never 
reaches the person, we need to find a way. I don't know if that has ever happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I've sent, I've withdrawn money from my account and it never arrived. Oh, I thought sending money to someone or from even person. Sending, yes. Ah, okay. So there's that kind of technology that has been uh, put in there to to help you get yes. back your money and just yes. focus on security. Yes. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Now, um, before we go to what you do at Yada School, the people who have developed software, what is usually the problem? Because they develop software or come up with an application but then it doesn't receive as much um, you know, engagement as they would have wanted. What's usually the problem? Mm, now you see now you're going to the business side mm. of tech. Okay. Yes. You can make any tech, mm -hmm. whatever you want. But if you don't have a client that is ready to use it, mm -hmm. essentially any business you're doing, if you don't have a buyer, you don't have a business because mm -hmm. you're not making money. So it's like any other business, the same way you, when you yes. go out there and look at an area, you scout, you mm. do research, it's the same with tech. Before you come up with an application, yes. you have to have users ready. Yes, there's something that we do that is called uh, now research and development. I'm, I'm also very interested in the business side, so that's why, mm. my way, but mostly programmers are just there to code and finish and give you the solution. Uh -huh. Whether it works or not, that's your own that problem. is up to you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So mm. what you do in research and development, you look at your competitors, you look at what you're trying to achieve, what are you bringing, what is the unique factor you're bringing to the market. Mm -hmm. You're looking at all these things and you're gathering business knowledge and even possibly partnering with the right business minds. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you want to do, maybe someone has done. Okay. Yes, and whatever client you may want mm. is someone else's client. So if you just study mm -hmm. the behavior of how customers behave, you're able to arrive at the conclusion. So when you have that problem, either you have poor salesmen, they have a good product, mm -hmm. but bad people who are selling it, okay. and they don't know how to market it. Because mm -hmm. also how you market is also a difference. I remember there's a time Apple, mm -hmm. they went back to marketing. If you see how they came up with Think Different, Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs was just saying, now we need to, people need to identify with our product uniquely. Let it be outside the fact that it's a laptop, it can do ABCD, it's superior, all those things are nice. But mm -hmm. right now, you, and you'll see that, that there's a sense of a feeling in anyone using an iPhone or a MacBook or anything, they just feel like they are a class above. Yeah. Yes, because that was the idea. Uh -huh. If you see all the advertisements out there, when you see Nike, for example, advertising, <laughs> you won't know they're selling shoes. You'll mm -hmm. see an athlete, and they'll tell you, just do it. You'll see Kipchoge, you'll see Cristiano, you'll see. Yeah, big so brand they already sat and thought, people are buying what they are seeing. So they're selling a dream. They're not exactly selling you. And all they do is sell shoes and products like that. And they make money. <laughs> like any other. But they don't tell you, buy shoes. <laughs> Nike shoes are the best. Yeah. They are like this. They are comfortable. They are this. They realized that's not what people are I'm looking buying. for. Yes. So they sell a dream. Yes. Okay, very interesting. A good way to look at it. And um, now that you're also good in the business side of it, for people, you know, we're usually told um, when you're looking for an opportunity, especially in business, then look to solve a problem. Then that works. But now how important is it to integrate that solution that you're creating with technology? Mm. If you see, one of the things that technology does, it expands your reach. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why, let me give an example. At the heart of it, Amazon is not an e-commerce business. It's a warehousing business, where mm -hmm. we trust. That's why you okay. bypass everyone in Kenya mm -hmm. and go ship something from Amazon because you trust them. Yeah. They have built that trust. Now, if their shop was just located, their warehouse was located in America and just stayed there, then the range is limited. Mm -hmm. But because they realized, oh, we can do shipping, so let's build a site. Mm -hmm. These people already trust us. Let's build a site. So they have expanded their reach by I don't know how many people. <laughs> because now virtually anyone from anywhere can use Amazon and can trust it. And there are many sites, but why are you trusting Amazon over oh, other e-commerce sites? Okay. So that's what they have done. They mm -hmm. have used technology. It's important. Right now, everything we're doing is technology-based. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do, you want to make sure technology is there. Uh, at the heart of it okay. because that really expands your reach. You can, in a moment's notice, you can gain the right traction if maybe I use the right influencer. Mm -hmm. One influencer who has many millions Million of followers. followers. It's like imagine I was seeing like someone like Cristiano has 
I don't know, over a billion followers. Yeah. You can imagine. If he just mentions your product. You have shot up. Yes. Instantly. Immediately, <laughs> over one billion people know about your product. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you don't use technology and you say, I'm going to market it, I'm going to go door to door. You will still make sales. Mm -hmm. But how long Not will you take? Not as much as you would have. Yes. And technology. in this era we are in, you need to do both. You mm -hmm. can't just depend also on technology only. Okay. Yes, because maybe you are th the person that's supposed to use your product has the money, is waiting, but they are not tech savvy or anything. Okay. They are old school kind of people. What mm -hmm. are you going to do? So you need to, to use both approaches, technology and that old traditional way. Yes. Now, uh, apart from you having knowledge, of, you know, sharing knowledge on software development, you also mm. teach that and you have a coding school that said mm. a school of technology. Tell us a bit about that. Why? Did you see the need to have that? Okay, so why I saw the need is, it was it started within our church. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just sat down and I saw like we our church is a very young church, of very many young people who are vibrant and everything, mm -hmm. very much on fire for God and everything. But on that side, I saw an opportunity that these people, if given the right skills, if equipped, they can be able to do something. And many times people don't do things like coding because they think it's beyond them. True, yeah, yeah. It, it looks difficult. It looks like someone who's very techy has yes. to do coding. And many of us people who've gone to campus and graduated, we think it's automatic. <laughs> you will be surprised when you interact with people how many people have not gone to school, uh -huh. not done a diploma, they just finished at Form 4, mm -hmm. end of story. Yeah. So when I saw this, I was like, if these people are willing, they have, they have the machines, they have the internet, they just don't know they can do this. Mm -hmm. But they're out there searching for jobs and saying how the no economy, employment. the government, and the everything. <laughs> so I said, okay, let, let's try it out. So I offered a uh, free course for the first cohort that joined and said, okay. if you want to learn computer science, join. Mm -hmm. So the people who joined, I told them, you don't need any prior coding experience. As long as you know your way around a computer, basically, let's say even say someone who's just done packages, you are ready. Because I saw that these people, most of them maybe d even don't have the money to do that kind of advanced. Because right now, any course we're going to do, an average of 50,000, maybe even a semester, not everyone has that kind of money. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly, they are around because they are in on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're on these places. Platforms. Yes, they have the bundles, they have the data, <laughs> yeah. but they just don't know what to do with what they have. Mm -hmm. So I saw if these people understood the power that they had, because personally for me, I studied computer science, but most of what I learned, I learned after school. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> because when I went to school and as it was being taught, sometimes our lecturers don't emphasize how important these things are, how okay. you have to navigate that course yourself, mm -hmm. which also is on the part of the student. It's not just entirely on the yeah, lecturer. On, on them. But I saw the power after leaving school. Mm -hmm. And you decided to yes. impact the rest. So basically, anyone can learn coding you don't have to have passion specifically passion mm. in computer science mm. but how um how important is it to learn coding or what benefits does mm. it have coding does not just teach you how to instruct a computer to mm. do things it teaches you how to think most people that will that are coding will tell you that mm -hmm. as a programmer your core thing your core it's like you're paid to think more than anything. <laughs> Coding is the easy part. Okay. It's just like someone who's paid to communicate. Mm -hmm. They communicate different from you and you're like, you listen to them and you're like, I, I like what he's saying. Mm -hmm. You have the same thoughts, you have the same words, you have the same everything. They're just doing what th you could do, but doing it better. Okay. They have studied it as an art and mm -hmm. now they can communicate better. Yeah. So it's the same thing. We all might know coding, but my solution, your solution might be A very different, different because okay. we think different. Mm -hmm. So this is just a simple process of teaching someone how to think as a mm -hmm. computer pro programmer. But you'll find that it boils over into areas of your life. Like, for example, the systematic thinking I've broken down. Mm -hmm. This I'm doing for software. But imagine any other project. I cannot do any other project without planning because now I'm used to planning, planning uh, designing implementing so i'll want that order in some way okay because i've seen that kind of forward planning mm -hmm. and what it does and that kind of visibility between me and a particular other client mm. so in everything i do i'm now approaching it like a problem solving 
opportunity. All right, interesting. Yes. Interesting way to look at it because, you know, sometimes it's, it looks a bit hard. And how long does it take for you to learn coding? You never stop learning. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that? You never stop learning. Okay. Actually, the but more you learn, uh -huh. the more you realize the things you don't know. <laughs> because let's say someone, uh, there is an Indian somewhere right now who started coding <laughs> at 10 years and is now 40 years. They're still coding. Yes, what they have seen and what I have seen for just over six years is very different. Okay, what they can sense. do and what they ca can do is different. Mm -hmm. So there's always a higher level. There's always something more you can do. However, it varies. Like, like you're asking. For the basic Yes, the basic level. the basic level, it's more of your interest. Mm -hmm. So even in three months, you can go from zero to a, a pretty good programmer. Mm -hmm. If for three months I do nothing but code, eight to five, code, eight to five, every day, code, 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 and learn some bit of computer science. Because it's not just coding, mm -hmm. it's understanding the science behind computers that is going to help more okay. than even coding. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to help you access various mm -hmm. assets of a computer. In that's 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 what creates the difference. All right. Yeah. Interesting. F um, as we as we wrap up on this, what mm -hmm. opportunities does it open for one to who learns this? Many opportunities. Like one, you can right now, for any business worth its salt that you want to create and you want to have a technological solution, mm -hmm. it will cost you maybe. 300,000 and above to just make the solution okay. from a person who really knows what they're doing and everything. Mm. So if you go for cheaper people, then keep complaining. That's why <laughs> you're complaining. So imagine, first of all, it can save you money mm -hmm. and it can give you, when you have an idea, now you can code it yourself. Then also in the career, career field, mm -hmm. you can now do many things. You can become a mm -hmm. data scientist, you can go into AI, you can go into many things, you can go into just web development, you can go into mobile development. Yeah. And they pay well, but you have to be really good because no one is just going to give you money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, I think we are short of time. So okay. tell us where we can find you on your socials. If someone wants to get to learn about coding from your school, where can they get you? This mm -hmm. is your camera. Okay. So you can get us on Instagram, at Yada School of Tech, that's our handle. Mm -hmm. You can also visit our website, that is theadaschooloftech.com. You'll find all the information that you need to be able to start coding, make a career in coding, and anything else that you need. And all your queries can be handled there. My, can I give you my personal number? If you're free, if you want yes. people to call you, then you can give it. Because I want people to learn coding. Uh -huh. Where we are right now, even you see how this government embraces technology. Mm -hmm. This is the time. This is the way to go. Yes. Okay. So my, you can reach me on 0727-136485. That is 0727-136485. Okay. And when you visit our handles, you'll get all the information that you need. All right. Thank you very yes. much, Salmon, for coming on board and sharing the amazing insights. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. Mm -hmm. That has been... Talmon Mwakesi, the CEO of Yala, um, Yada School of Technology, talking to us about the develop software development life cycle. And uh, this is where we put a cap on the tech segment and we get into entertainment. I hope you are ready because we have amazing guests who are already in studio. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back. Remember, the hashtag is Thursday Vibes at Y254TV. See you on the other side.